back with the gas station food cyclist. Back by popular demand. Thank you so much for everyone that wanted me to come back on. Uh, I was actually curving <laughs> Jeff. Jeff was like, we, we need to record. We need to record. We need to record. And I just kept bailing on him. So thank you for dealing with my bullshit, Jeff. Uh, glad, to, glad to be no, back. Dude, I love having you on. People, I love the comments people send about your voice. That's my favorite. I love reading comments that people send. So feel free to drop down below and mention how much you love the gas station food cyclist's voice. I will screenshot all of them and add it to a little folder on my iPhone. Uh, that's <laughs> a little black. black. <laughs> okay, I think this. So this one's going to be a little bit different, guys. This is going to be very informal. Yeah, it's free <laughs> because editing is hard. Editing is hard, and I like chatting with Christopher. I mean, gas station food cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to do this one a, a bit different. Chatting um, with who? This. <laughs> I, uh, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Mothman. Yeah. They we're gonna call you. <laughs> uh, the, uh, but this is footage. Um, this is not my footage. This is not uh, gas station food cyclists' footage. Neither of us are racing in Northern California right now, which is really I sad. Know. And we're not actually riding our bikes right now because uh, our state is going through a horrible, tragic event right now. So we're, we won't pontificate on it. But so um, no racing around around here. Um, but we do get to to enjoy race content submitted. So you guys can submit your footage to, uh, to NorCalCyclingVideos at gmail.com. Actually, I have a new email. I'm getting professional now, man. It's jeff at NorCal-Cycling.com. So either one of those will work. If you just want to um, email me, you can uh, Google Drive your footage to me. Let me know. And we can talk about it at uh, 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you, John, for sum sending this footage in. This was submitted by John. He was on the channel before. Uh, John um, is racing solo today. He submitted the footage from a couple weeks back. It was the 212 heart rate. As you can see, he's chilling right now at 192. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, he has a max heart rate of 218, he told me. How in the old notes. is he? So, if he, did he, has he told you? He's I think he's younger. I don't know if he's ever told me. Okay. He's a younger, he's a younger guy, It'd though. It'd be um, inappropriate to ask someone's age, but... <laughs> He might get offended. <laughs> um, no, he's a younger guy. He's just um, he's still pretty new to the sport. Yeah. Uh, his 212 heart rate was a Cat 4-5 race. He's in the threes now. This is the Cat 3 field. Uh, this is um, a crit in Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, Cat 3s. Big old 20-mile-an-hour wind, as you can see by those blue arrows. So that kind of sets up this field right here. He's sitting on the front right now in the headwind. I'm not really sure why. Yeah, this, uh, this course looks really interesting because it's kind of like on a – like a narrow road uh, with like bad i mean it's not like the worst asphalt conditions but there's obvious like chips and stuff that you kind of have to watch out for but you're really exposed in this section right here you have your this is why you don't want to sit on the front yeah by the way, yeah so he's just sitting on the front and then someone's gonna attack right into this like slight curve into the road and then the whole field's gonna chase but the you really have no protection at that point in the course from the wind or really any point in the course. See, and, and now now he's, because he was just sitting there, and he, he wasn't riding easy on the front, Yeah. now there's this big gap that's opened up. Yeah, so now he's at 204 BPM and into uh. a turn, and then... And now he's going to get guttered, right? Yeah. Like, if this, were, if this were a P12 race, this guy in front of him should be all the way to the left, right? Because the wind is coming strong right to left. I would literally be on the edge of the road, like like rolling into the grass on occasion, just to screw everybody behind you, because... You want to win the race. And if you're doing hard work to close a gap, you make everyone else do hard work to close the gap, too. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, I think people, a lot of people maybe don't understand that. You tell me, Christopher. I when honestly you first started think, like, in lower category racing, like, depending on where you are in the world, you just ride to, like, the normal side of the road that you would, <laughs> you would ride. Like, the, you, like so, like, in this well, in Let's this talk video, about the reason why. Yeah, in this video, they're all riding, like, to the f as far right as possible when... Really, they should be at the left, right? At certain points in the course, they're not like that. Start finish straight away. Yeah. It's it's a tail right left wind. Like you should be all the way to the left. Now it's a tailwind. You can see their speed is climbing as a result. He's up to thirty miles an hour, but he's been over two hundred beats per minute here for the last half a lap. Yeah. And oh my god, like that is so rough. So the guy that was like he was kind of taking a ride off of. I don't know if he's behind him now, but that guy just put in like a minute of chasing and you can see that he's like sprinting out of the saddle to just connect on to the, at, to the very end. And, and well, he's lucky too, because this group up the road is like 10 riders yeah. and nobody, it's not organized. If it were four riders, that could have been the end of the race or at least an established breakaway. 
But like right here, why isn't the field all the way to the right? Again, now it's a left to right wind, the opposite from the uh, the the right to left. Now it's a left to right. Yeah, so I mean at this point they're just all, the the right. all spread out, looking at each other, trying to see what who's gonna go next. This is the critical leg of the race to me, because you have a tail, and you have a cross. So if you're all the way to the right. Um, which, by the way, John's smart right here. He's getting a little bit of a draft off 307. Yeah. But if you're all the way to the right, then you can just gutter the, the whole field. And then what happens is you make these, these two quick left-handers. They're approaching the first one right now. And now it's into a headwind. So what you do is you establish your gap on this, um, this tail left-to-right crosswind. And then once you have you know four or five seconds, you do a big attack through there you're hit with a big headwind for that whole back section of the course. Who wants to chase in a headwind? So to me, that would be my springboard for breakaway. Yeah, I mean, and this this course is, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Um, it, it's, it really is, like, just flat as can be. There's no, there's no, like, sort of, like, technical little rises or anything that you can take advantage of. So, like, you have to you, no wind. You have to be able to use wind to your advantage. Uh, That's the defining feature of this course. It's not particularly technical. There's wide roads. Yeah. It's decent pavement. It's the wind is what is the course feature to, to me. Like if I'm looking at this this race, I'm waking up in the morning. I'm eating my breakfast. I'm looking at the weather. I'm like, oh, 20 miles an hour. I'm looking at the course profile. If I've never raced there, oh, it's flat. Okay, not many corners. The wind is the number one thing. This reminds me a lot of Alviso, right? Alviso isn't particularly technical, but it can be particularly windy. And that's usually the defining feature of Alviso. And that's why I, I, I really enjoy these types of courses in these conditions. Yeah, I mean, even if it is technical, yo, there's like plenty of technical races that I have, you know, done in my life where the wind outweighs the technicality. It can, yeah. Sure. yeah. And like, if you know, okay, so I get this a lot, especially with gas station food cyclists, based off of the type of people that are into the content I post. It, it's, you know, like none of us are like the real weight weenie types. Um, we're not, you know. Did your, you, did your Instagram handle is gas station food cyclist? I think they know you're not a weight Yeah, so <laughs> it's <laughs> like, so everyone's like, okay, like, you know, like how, you know, like, what do you use for racecraft and stuff? And it's like, yeah, like I get called a crit boy all the time. You know, I, I'm like on the, I'm on the higher end of the weight scale. I don't really give a rat's ass. I use racecraft to make up for it. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's plenty of cases where like, you know, I should be dropped given given the elevation, but if you use racecraft and you play it smart, like yo, you can you know like it. But you don't have to be like the you know the twig man to to survive a race a lot of the time. That's what I love about this sport, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, let's go one step further. It's not just about weight. Talk about fitness too. I am seldom the fittest rider. Oh yeah. Like. Dude, I got like a house and a kid and yeah. a full time job. And, like, like, how I, many nights ha or like how many times have you like shown up to a bike race with like the most like dog shit sleep on planet Earth? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. oh well, yeah, all the time. And I'm I'm usually I'm usually not the fittest person there. Like, I've sure I've spent like the better part of a decade trying to develop myself as an endurance athlete, but I've done it on eight hours a week on average. I'd say some weeks are better than others. Some sometimes I can sneak in, you know, twelve or fourteen hours a week, but like. It, that's what I love about this sport is you don't have to be the lightest. You don't have to be the fittest. Yeah. There's this huge element, and that's kind of what my channel is based around, which is how's your race craft? Are you making good race decisions? Yeah. And that's that's usually like, – you could throw away all the fitness if you do a boneheaded thing, like get on the front in a headwind and smash as hard yeah. as you can and then get counterattacked. Like that just nullifies all of your fitness that you've worked on. Or like you jam your brakes like – coming out of the apex of a term you know like oh, that sort yeah. of thing like uh, so i was watching a video from another youtuber uh the other day where i actually got you betrayed me uh, Christopher. yeah no and it's not one i particularly enjoy all that much but uh i did end up having a cameo in it where i'm getting interviewed and it was it was about like a super technical course uh that we do in northern california brisbane and, you know, a lot of people were saying, you know, this course is like really unsafe, even at the P12 level, like we really shouldn't be doing this course. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Like right now in Northern California, our field sizes were pretty small back then. We were only getting like 25 people out to that race. And, you know, that's actually that, you know, like for some races, that was actually kind of big, uh, you know, 2017, 2018. Like we had small field numbers a lot of the times at some of the local races. 
and I was being asked like what I felt about the technicality of the course. And I'm like, yo, like the technicality, it's like, it's those who dare win, you know, like those who like can ride technical or really, really push themselves to the limit on a technical course. Uh, you know, they're the ones that can take advantage from that, you know, versus like the most like prepared person, you know, the person that's slept the best that has like ate the best that day. Um, Yo, if, Ooh, big attack on the right. Yeah, big attack. And then also that's a super windy course. So it's super technical. It's super windy. And like there's times. You just have to be sharp, right? You can't, yeah. you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to sit in the field and, and just like rest for a bit. No, you have to stay sharp because gaps will open up. And yeah, it's about, it's about racecraft. It's, it's about p- position more than anything else. I guess that's the simpler version of it is like you have to position yourself accordingly because when those moments come where it's like, hey, the, the, the attacks are flying. Or you're on the, the part of the course where you can be very vulnerable to gaps opening up. You have to be prepared like that hairpin on that course, you know? Yeah, and then you you had a situation where uh, your now current t- teammate, uh, who was your rival at the time, the b- two of you went into the last turn on that course for a sprint yeah. finish one year, and you took, like, you took, like, a little more of a cautious line, right? And th- you'd say, like, you took the more, like, conservative line going into that turn. And Andy, I've never seen someone's tires flex that hard. Yeah, like that. Dude, yeah, that was that was a wicked line that he took. That dude took um, the most. He had a better line, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> like I was, I was playing makeup that year, so like, I, uh, I was at a position with 500 meters to go. Yeah, and um, and I was, I think at 500, I was, I was already in a losing position because I did basically did everything as best as I could after 500 meters to go but i didn't set myself up for the win yeah which comes back to your point which is like dude it's all about position yeah yeah you know or or, you know and then also using like using the technicality of the course to get yourself the best positioning yeah yeah Yeah, i was i was um i did great after 500 meters (laughs) not so good before that like the last lap i was just wasn't i wasn't there um but yeah, let's uh, maybe let's talk about what's going on here because yeah, sorry, sorry if we're uh, to, if you're <laughs> if you're like watching this video and you're in this race, it's not that this race is boring or anything. Um, it's just that we're shooting this shit. No, yeah. I just warned you guys. This one's gonna be a, a tad different. Um, and again, like we're now we're seeing a little bit of echeloning here on the left, but oh, there you go. This attack. Okay, this is a good example. Let's talk about this attack. He doesn't. I guess he's a little bit right now, but he's riding in the middle of the road. Everyone's just getting an awesome draft. John's smart, by the way. Yeah. Um, he just upgraded to the threes. Congratulations, John. Um, but he is getting... He's he's off to the left right here. Well, he's losing the wheel a little bit. Yeah. But the point is, is that attack should have been on the far left-hand side of the road. If it started on the right, that's great. Whatever. Once you get to the front and you're attacking and you're putting a lot of, of watts into the bike swing off to the left and then force the people behind you to do the same amount of power that you're doing you take use the wind to your advantage i feel like the wind is just like this this afterthought is, like nobody's actually taking the wind this into consideration a, was that like actually kind of like a slight downhill that was enough for this dude to no it's just a, they were ooh, he got a little squirrely on that corner too no he's just he's just yeah, trying know. to he's tuck just into it i mean three. well so john john kind of knew that like he could use that guy this is a good counter right here. What about that, right? Yeah. When it, when, every time you see, you see it fan out at the front like that, there's a big attack. It gets caught back. It fans out. Just counter. Yeah, just right? go. Like, yeah, I mean that. I'm a sprinter. I would counter. Whatever. That was the sort of thing when we, like, when, e- even before we were teammates, like, you and I would both do that. We, there, like, there was that one race we were just punching each other in the face. Remember that? We were, like. Oh, the Tri-Valley? Yeah, we were just, course? like, trying yeah. to counter each other out of the breakaway. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I love that. I love that. That was a windy day, too. Yeah. But here we go. At least, again, now we're off to the right again, so that's good. But the problem that John's having is he is reacting to everything. And on a windy course like this, like, you have to be. You have to be the instigator. You have to you have to be the one that starts the attacks, not respond to every attack. Because um, if people are smart in the wind, you're going to get guttered and you're going to get ga- uh, gapped off, and you're not going to be on the, the happy side of that uh, split. So here's an attack right before the headwind. I wouldn't choose this spot to to go for it, but um, hey, if you're confident that you can, you know, smash away into a headwind, then go for it. It looks like he's got a gap. You just have to be careful if you're attacking into a headwind people in your draft get like a double benefit right yeah oh so john wrote into the notes that he didn't feel like he was the fittest on the day um and going back to like racecraft like i we've been watching john i was 
trying to put this in earlier, but I kind of rambled a little bit. He is doing a really good job of letting other people chase down stuff. You know what I mean? So, like, if John felt like he w came into this race and he wasn't the fittest, yo, a good a good thing to do, if you feel that way, is to not chase down everything yourself. Or, like, all those, like, times he was getting gapped or he missed an attack, he was letting someone else pull him back on. And he was doing it in, like, a really sly way that doesn't get people turning around and dropping, you know, F-bombs at you. He was... He was doing it like really tactfully, so I gotta give him kudos to that. No, 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 for sure, for sure. It's, it did seem like he was he was um, leaning on other people to close gaps, but the issue with that is like if the gap opens up too big, and then the person in front of you turns around and, and starts with the f bombs, yeah. and then says like, "All right, your turn." It's like, oh man, no, yeah. It's a it's a risky game. Like you can play that game, but it's a risky game because once the person in front of you. Yeah says like hey dude i'm not pulling you up there yeah so that then works that <laughs> he's doing it well as a cat three it yo i i mean he did say that he raced the p123 later that day um i don't oh yeah, yeah i yeah. have good footage i have good footage from that <laughs> we'll we'll share that uh not not to, not not in this footage but we'll share that in another one yeah but um what are we at we're at 3700 i told you this was gonna go fast dude we're at 3700 meters to go already uh and it's yeah, all together he hasn't he hasn't made a single attack um, but I'm telling you right now, if you're listening to this, John, or anybody else, all seven of you who have made it this far into this video, <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if, even if you're new, like, I feel like, I feel like John is strong enough. Use the wind to your advantage right here. John, attack up the left side. Look at this right to left crosswind. Attack on the left. If you're doing 200 watts, the person behind you is doing 200 watts. If you're doing 800 watts, the person behind you is doing 800 watts. You take away... Oh, he's in the grass a little bit, it looks like. It looks like the the guy but at the front didn't want to be at the front, so he got a little squirrely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's just... Now he's just zigzagging across the yeah. road. But, like, if you don't want to be at the front, just go to the left. Yeah, I know. The only reason... Okay, okay, I put it this way. The only reason you would be at the right on this home, this uh, start-finish straight... Again, right to left cross, when the only reason you would be at the right is if you're in a breakaway and you are intentionally helping the people behind you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, you're sense. trying to kill the break. <laughs> no, 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 you're trying to help oh, the break. Oh, you're trying you're to help the, right. the break. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, if you're if you're in a breakaway and you're trying to help your um your breakmates, you're off to the right and then it's staggered. So that way that way yeah, everyone yeah, gets yeah, the draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you're like leading out or something like that. Speaking of which, we're going to get to a lead out here pretty soon, but but there is no reason if you're just at the front of the peloton that you, that you are all the way off to the right. Like, you should be um, you should be punishing the people behind you. Yeah. Oh, see, like, John's hurting now. Yeah. See, I feel I feel like he's he's not... Res this he kind of lets gaps go and then has to close them up. Like, he does it... It's weird, he right? He closes it up well, but, you know, <laughs> he also, like... But you don't want to, you, you don't want to close any gaps. Yeah, if you don't want to close gaps, any gaps. Something's gone wrong. But you also don't want to sit at the front the whole entire damn day, so... You know, and you've just described a bike race. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't, and you don't want to sit at the front on the wrong side of the. You know, sorry, like the the I I'm so bad with like left right left. You know, like when we're talking about um, situations, unless I could visualize it in my head, which is hard. But well, 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 yeah. I mean, if you wanted to kill the break, yeah. Um, on this on this straight, you would stay off to the right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just think about what the wind's doing. Yeah, it's the opposite. Um, it's it's not that I. Yeah, it's just that like I'm all all turned around right now. So I mean, but now everyone's just bunching up. And the, the 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 use of the road is like very. It's very like, hey, I don't want to be up here. You guys should all, and that's. I mean, if John wanted to make a late move attack right now into this headwind section. He should have done it in that in that straightaway that I mentioned. Yeah, earlier. yeah, yeah. And and uh, and then gotten his gap there, and then he should have, uh, you know, you then you hold your gap through this headwind section, and nobody wants to chase in a headwind. That's why I think that's the best place. But let's talk about yeah. because now we're now we're gonna um, we're coming into uh, well this actually wait this is the last lap. Yeah, this is so, fourteen hundred so, meters to go. So yeah, he Dang. he should okay, last lap. Okay, so so John isn't um isn't a sprinter, uh, but he has. Well, it's actually not even his teammate. It's his bro, which is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> which is totally fine. But he's like, uh, in his notes, we're looking at his notes right now. In his notes, he's like, I wanted to lead my, my buddy out. Um, so, you know, John, I don't really know. I think he was just kind of getting his feet wet in the Cat 3 field. Because if he's not a sprinter and you're also not trying to break away, I don't really know what you're doing. But here he's, he's, he's leading his teammate out. But I have a couple issues with this. Because you don't sprint 
when you're leading somebody out. The whole point of the lead out is to not do a big acceleration like this. You keep it smooth. Any sudden change in speed kills the legs of a sprinter. You want to ease, slowly ease into a high rate of speed. So already like a big sprint like this, maybe not the best idea if he's truly trying to lead out um, his buddy behind him. Yeah, and but anyways, so if you watch your draft. videos, like the videos from you, like that, that's when you're yelling at people as a sprinter. You are the one that is yelling at them how soft or hard to go. You're like, easy, easy. Like you did that with Matt all the time. It's like now, yeah. now, now, now. Like you guys had the perfect language already dialed. So this last corner is super critical if you're leading out your buddy for a couple of reasons. One, last corner to crit, guys. What do I say? I'm a broken record. Be first to the last corner. He's leading out his teammates, so it's okay if your teammate's first to this last corner. He wants to swing out all the way to the right here, but he leaves a little lane open yeah. and inadvertently leads somebody else out, basically. His friend is on the left in the blue, if you guys want to replay that. I'm really concerned with how much he's looking down at his handlebars and like what little motion he yeah. just had with his hand there, because he's like... When people, yeah. Let's watch that one more time, actually. I'm going to, uh, Look. I'm going to pause it right here, and I'm going to rewind this bad boy, and we're going to watch from, what do you think? Let's look at his attack again. Yeah. Why not? All right. Let's rewind to. Right there. This is, this is such intriguing commentary. Right. Okay. 1060. So starting at 1060. He starts his attack. Yeah. He accelerates a little bit too hard. I already kind of harped on him for that, but that's fine. Um, he'll learn. Or, or accelerate as hard as you possibly can because, John, hey, you, like, you're like you a cat three. You say that you're not a sprinter. I was, I am definitely not. I'm definitely not a sprinter. Uh, when I was a cat three, I was launching from like 1,500 meters to go trying to catch people off guard and like guess what and it's worked for you you've gotten wins uh, yeah it's worked it, you know i didn't have a really good kill ratio on it but it did work in some and if you're one of those guys that's out there racing every single weekend just chasing upgrade points it's a good tactic that you could use every now and then so yeah go ahead and go full gas from 1500 yeah meters. yeah but don't don't do it in a headwind yeah. and don't do it inside of one kilometer there's a couple of problems with that we won't get into it yeah i want to talk about this last corner one more time and let's slow it down as he's approaching this last corner Inside line right here, we've slowed it down, 375 meters to go. He's looking back to see where his teammate is one last glance, which is a bit weird because he should be finishing his pull here pretty soon. Yeah, you don't ever want to be looking back when you have people on your wheel. In a fit and then right here, he leaves this outside lane open, and you need to swing all the way out to the right and prevent that from happening. You need to shut the door. Yeah. Shut the door on the people behind. That doesn't mean like get in their way, just pre prevent that lane yeah i'm gonna get a bunch of crap in the comments for like does shut the door mean crash them out no it doesn't yeah so i just want to be really clear <laughs> that shutting <laughs> shutting the door just means like not giving them space yeah so like you don't allow for peter peter Sagan to move up on the inside and ever give you the opportunity to throw an elbow into you exactly you know what I mean? exactly so so in this position right here 320 meters if he is all the way on like on the grass line even further back, 340 meters. If yeah. he swings all the way out to the grass, this guy can't pass him unless he wants to ride up onto the grass. Yeah. And that what that does is that gives his buddy 307 here the opportunity to get a, what they call a clean set of wheels off the front and a good look. Again, another problem. I'm not uh, sorry, John. I hate to harp on you too much, but um, 300 meters dropping off your sprinter is uh, yikes. Is is pretty long. He did say in the notes that his buddy likes to sprint from long, but I don't know, man. But 300 then, meters is pretty far. So he drops off, and you can, if you just let it roll again, you can see that one hand is in the drops and one hand is in the hoods, and he starts looking down. So, like, John, I, I see that your heart beats at 210. You're probably not in the best frame of mind, but just... Keep your hands on your bars. Yeah, <laughs> keep, like, keep your hands on the bars. Let everyone go around you, because... You know, I have. This is such a dangerous moment. Yeah, I have ridden into the back of people. You need to protect yourself, but you also need to, um, you know, protect the people around you and like keep your hands glued to your bars. A good habit to get into is riding in the drops full time, especially 300 meters to go. Don't be taking your hands off the bars, and make sure your hands are in the drops to prevent crashes. And this is just looks so dangerous to me. But fortunately, everyone stays upright and. Uh, his teammate sprints to second place. I his believe. homie. His um, homie. It's all about the homie love. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Which, like, yo, if you if you got beef with that and you were at this race and you're like, yo, man, like, two people, you know, not on the same team, like, I think... It's all fair. 
I would be able to like witness that and know that. I think I have like enough race to, like smarts that I would be able to see that from a mile away. But like, I understand why some people would be upset. So like, hey, yo, go off in, on it in the comments. I mean, maybe Jeff doesn't want me advocating people going off in the comments of his videos, but <laughs> I'd like to. No, I'd ahead. like to see what like <laughs> the the status of like Cat 3's opinion is on this. Like, is it is it kosher or is it not kosher? Like, uh, no, I'm for, I'm for it. Um, and and. To be honest, though, his um, his lead out looked more like an attack. So I don't think anybody in this race. Was I would be surprised. I would, yeah, I would be surprised if anybody in this race had beef because they're like, hey, you can't lead out somebody who's not on your team. Yeah. Because honestly, I bet you everybody that left this race was like, oh, John's late race attack didn't work because that's what it looked like to me. Yeah. If he didn't put it this way, if he didn't say in the notes that he was leading his teammate out, I would have just thought, oh, he tried a late race attack and it didn't work. Yeah. Anyway, um. For the first time you're in the Cat 3, to be at the front of the race um, with 300 meters to go means that you're doing something right. So congrats, John. Yeah. Uh, I Dude, I like... This is going to be so much easier to edit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I was about to say your name again and dox you one more time. Thank you, uh, Gas Station Food Cyclist, for coming on, man. No, not a problem. Anytime. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> let me know. Uh, let me know if you like this more like podcasty, informal style. Uh, it's something new. Uh, let me know if you like it, if you dislike it, what, what I can do to... Uh, make the content that you like so just uh, leave a comment below and uh, we'll catch you guys at the next one yeah and then also you can follow me on instagram at gas station food cyclist uh tag me in your mid-ride hauls as i like to call them if you go to a gas station and get a bunch of snacks and stuff to kill your bonk take a picture of it tag me in it and i will rate it yeah <laughs> please do it's actually one of the few instagram accounts that i follow so thanks guys and i'll catch you at the next one all right take care